Hi everyone. In this video, we will be generating a DMX universe utilizing the fixture profiles in the master AI light show database. Now the DMX universe we are going to create here will consist of two up lights and a gig bar move. Now, if you're looking at the DJ booth here, just picture a up light on the right hand side, followed by the gig bar move behind the DJ and another uh, up light on the left hand side. Okay, so that's what we're going to create here. So let's go into DMX Universes. You want to click Add on the bottom. We'll give this a name. We'll just call this uh, a Demo. And you'll notice on the left-hand pane here is where you access all of your DMX fixture profiles, both those in the AI Light Show Master Database list as well as those in your own personal user database. So in this case, we want to grab the Gig Bar Move, which is a Chauvet DJ fixture. And you'll notice we have two gig bar moves, both 35 channel versions. The only difference between the two here is how the sub fixture placement IDs were assigned, which I'll touch on a little bit later. So we'll grab one of these, and this is the 35 channel personality, the gig bar move. We'll add him in, and then we'll grab our two up lights. We'll just grab two from Rockville. So we'll add two of those. Okay, now first things first, I like to assign the fixture placement IDs first. Now, once again, this dictates how the Force 1.0 generates a virtual map of your fixtures in space. So if you're looking at the lighting rig, once again, we had one rock wedge LED up light on the right hand side. We'll say that's gonna be this guy. So we'll assign him a fixture placement ID of one. Now moving from the right of your rig to the left, in the center, we have the gig bar move. So we'll assign him a fixture placement ID of two. And you'll notice that the sub fixture placement IDs for all the individual fixtures that make up the gig bar are assigned automatically. This is handled automatically by the app. And what you'll notice here is that the gig bar move occupies fixture placement IDs two through nine. So then if we move to the left again, so we're moving from the right to the left, the last fixture here is our rock wedge up light on the left hand side of the DJ booth. So this will get a fixture placement ID of 10. Okay, now all we have to do is assign DMX addresses. Obviously this is per your own personal liking, but we will start here. DMX address will assign one to the gig bar move. And once again, all the sub fixture DMX addresses are assigned appropriately. This is a 35 channel device. So the next one would be at least would have to be 36. And then this is a six channel fixture. So that means this one would have to be at least 42. All right, so we're good there. Now. I mentioned before that there were two versions of the gig bar. If you look over to the left, we had a right to left version and a left to right. What I mentioned before is that the only difference between these two profiles are how the fixture placement IDs within the gig bar move are assigned. So in this case, the right to left variant assigns the sub fixture placement IDs from right to left. And the gig bar L to R, left to right, would be the reverse of that, okay? Now, this is also a good example of the difference between multi-style fixtures, such as the gig bar, and single-style fixtures, such as these uplights, which make up the majority of fixtures that are out there. Okay, so once we have the fixture placement IDs handled and the DMX address, we can now move to the detail over to the right here. Now, one of the new features of the Force 1.0 with the new firmware is that you have six fixture groups that you can assign as you would like. So what I would do in this case is I would assign all of my up lights to one fixture group. So we'll say one, one. Then maybe you want to assign the two pars of the gig bar to another fixture group. And then maybe the moving heads to fixture group number three. And then your derbies, let's say four. And then we'll keep the laser on its own and the strobe on its own as well. Now, the power of this is that you can turn on and off any fixture groups at will. You can assign wash mode to any fixture groups at will. You can assign any attribute banks to any fixture groups at will. And you can do a whole bunch of other stuff covered in some of the other tutorial videos that we have. But this is an extremely powerful feature and you can utilize this as you see fit. Now, you will also notice moving to the right here is we have another column called lighting element brightness. I'll expand this a little bit. And what you'll see is any fixture that has lighting elements associated with it. When I say lighting elements, I mean a dimmer channel, a red, green, blue, amber, white, or a UV channel. 
you can specify the overall brightness of each of these indiv of those individual fixtures. All right, so by default, it gets set to 100%. And you'll notice some of these fixtures are not applicable. That's because the derbies and the lasers, they don't have any lighting element channels associated with them. Okay, but you are free to select set these any way you want from 10% all the way up to 100%. And this is very useful, especially if you have some fixtures that are blinders or extremely powerful in relation to others that you want to dim down a little bit. But for this case, I would probably just leave everything at 100%. Okay, the effects hit button. This is any type of fixture that you want to assign to the effects hit button on the Force 1.0. You can assign this to enable, and that fixture will only be activated once you hit the effects hit button on the unit. And once again, in this particular case, I probably wouldn't utilize that unless we added a fogger or something else to this rig. Okay, and then if we move over to the right here, we have a strobe or blinder fixture. Now, obviously, we have a strobe fixture. So in this case, I would set this to yes. And we have no other blinders or strobes, so keep everything else to no, which is the default. And then active during mood. This option allows you to determine whether or not some fixtures are going to be active during mood-based effects. So those subtle, slow-moving type effects that the Force 1.0 generates. And this is only applicable to those fixtures that don't have any lighting element channels associated with them. Personally, I would probably set the derbies to no, as well as the lasers. Now you'll notice that NA, non-applicable, gets assigned to any fixtures that have lighting element channels associated with them. That's because the Force 1.0 knows what to do with those during those portions of the light show. And it doesn't need any input from the user. It's only those channels that don't have lighting element channels associated with them. It wants some input from you to make that decision. Okay, and finally, the last thing you can decide to do here is assign your channel groups. There are 18 channel groups in total, and these channel groups are utilized to generate the custom attribute banks on the Force 1.0 itself. And those attribute banks are what is used when generating your static scenes or assigning fixture group overrides or selecting color theme modes. Okay, so they are important if you choose to use them. So what we'll do here is we'll go into our channel group assignments Okay, so what you'll notice here is you'll get access to every single channel within your defined DMX universe sorted by DMX address. So we have the gig bar move here assigned to DMX address of 1. We have our first rock wedge assigned to DMX address of 36. And we have our second rock wedge assigned to DMX address of 42. Okay, on the right hand column here is where our channel groups are. Currently, by default, they are all assigned to none but you can assign any number of your channels to any of the 18 channel groups that are available. So for example, I may want to assign my moving heads, the color wheels to channel one. I'll do this for both of the moving heads within the gig bar. And what this will give me access to is once I go to one of my attribute banks and I decide to start adjusting channel group number one, as I adjust that, I will be adjusting the color wheel values for both of my moving heads. All right, now I may want to do the same thing for the gobo wheels, assign them to two. All right, and then I can go through this in any type of parameter of within my DMX universe that I want specific control over when generating static scenes or attribute banks that may be utilized during fixture overrides or color theme creations. I can make those assignments here. Now, one thing you don't have to worry about is any of your color channels, so your red, green, blue, UV, red, green, blue, white, amber, UV, those get assigned to control capabilities automatically. So you do not have to assign those to channel groups unless you want to for a particular reason. Okay, so once you're all done here, you wanna hit the apply button. You wanna say okay once the pop-up box comes up and then you wanna make sure you save off your DMX universe. Okay, once we're done there, you can exit out of this and we have our DMX universe here. And now you can just decide which Force 1 memory location, 1 to 10, you want to save this to. And then connect up your Force 1.0 to the app and follow the instructions to write it to the unit itself.